Good afternoon. My name is Max Reese. I'm here with Senator David Lionhelm, and we are talking electricity prices this afternoon, uh, which we're going to see very big increases starting from uh, tomorrow. So it's uh, very topical. Uh, welcome, Senator. Thank you. Electricity prices have more than doubled in recent years. Many people are angry at the price rises and, and point to governments selling off our assets to greedy energy suppliers uh, and see them as the culprit. Is that true? Uh, what, what are the real causes of these price rises? No, it's not true. It's got nothing to do with, uh, with the privatising of electricity generators. Um, the fact is, uh, electricity is a market. Um, demand and supply uh, factors are, uh, are the, the key considerations. Uh, demand has obviously been going up, although not as fast as it used to because some industries have been closing down. But uh, supply hasn't been keeping up with demand. Uh, we've had uh, uh, some big power stations close down. Um, Hazelwood in uh, Victoria being the, the biggest of them, but there are about a dozen or so that have closed down over the last few years. No new power stations have been uh, built, with the exception of uh, some renewables, so wind turbines and solar farms. Their, their output is, has been a lot less, and of course they're not reliable. They're not, uh, they're not on all the time. When the wind is not blowing or the sun's not shining, then they don't generate any electricity. So uh, at certain times, uh, they're not even uh, contributing to the supply of electricity. So when, uh, uh, when uh, demand goes up, supply doesn't keep up with it, prices have to go up. Uh, that's, that's the fact. The other thing is, though, that uh, government-owned electricity generators are like government-owned airlines or government-owned banks or anything else that's government-owned. They, they don't operate on the same efficiency principles as uh, private businesses. You do get inefficient private businesses, but even an, in, an inefficient private business tends to be um, uh, better than a government-owned business. Government-owned business, businesses are typically um, uh, more like the public service. So to blame uh, a public, a private ownership of electricity generators is, uh, is uh, pointing at the wrong, the wrong culprit. Okay, thank you. Yeah, now, you've come out saying that you want to fully privatise our energy sector, while other parties, such as the Greens, want to nationalise the energy sector. Can you explain why privatising the energy sector will drive costs down? Can you, can you give some examples where privatisation has driven down costs? Yes. Um, it, it'll drive costs down simply because uh, uh, the electricity generators are competing with each other. And, uh, and they, you know, the more they drive costs down, the more profit they make um, or the more market share they will gain, depends on what they're after, um, compared to their less efficient uh, competitors. And where has it worked? Uh, it worked until uh, South Australia went all stupid and started building wind turbines and closing down um, baseload power stations. It worked in South Australia. They privatised their electricity. It worked in Victoria where they uh, privatised their electricity and uh, it also worked in New South Wales. They, they were more recent. Um, Victoria, until they uh, closed down Hazelwood, um, they had uh, quite competitive power. That, but it uh, really doesn't make any difference uh, who owns it. Uh, uh, if, uh, if, um, unless you're going to run at a loss, and only governments will run at a loss and then charge taxpayers for it, um, there is no point in um, uh, uh, anybody running a power station um, uh, without uh, without it making economic sense. So, if a private operator is running a, running a, a energy supplier a generator, they'll obviously seek to make a profit out of it. If the government owns it, they'll seek to make a profit out of it. Um, if it doesn't make a profit, um, then the private operator will try to increase prices or reduce costs will do something to make it profitable. A government-owned operator, well, they might do some of that, but more likely they'll go running off to the government and say subsidise it, so taxpayers in other areas will, um, uh, will end up uh, footing the bill. So uh, there's nothing to be gained by having the government um, owning an electricity generator. 
um, unless you have an absolute monopoly. It's uh, only when private sector is, uh, is an absolute monopoly, there's no competition in a market, uh, do you end up with undesirable outcomes. So long as there's competition, um, competition keeps, keeps prices under control. So competition is key. Competition is key. Some people say that coal is dead and that we need to invest in renewables to keep energy costs down. Is coal dead? I can't see how coal can possibly be dead. We, you know, what's going to replace it? Um, gas, possibly, um, except that, uh, and it does have less emissions, less carbon dioxide emissions than coal on a per kilowatt hour basis or gigawatt hour basis, however you want to talk about it. And uh, so you can say, well, maybe gas could do it, but you need a lot of gas. You, need, you do need a lot of gas. And at the moment we have absolute ban on uh, extracting gas in um, South Australia, Victoria, Tasmania, Northern Territory. And a uh, very difficult uh, process of getting gas out of the ground in uh, New South Wales as well. So I don't know where the gas is going to come from. Um, where else might it come from? Hydro, there's not enough rivers and you can't build that many dams. We're going to run out of uh, hydro power very soon. This whole Snowy Hydro 2 is a bit of smoke and mirrors, quite frankly. Um, is it going to, going to come from solar and, uh, and wind? Well, no, it can't. You're e ignoring the fact that uh, they have to be subsidised. They're very expensive to actually build, not so expensive to run. Um, even ignoring that, we just can't build enough. And of course, neighbours complain about the wind towers making them sick and killing birds and bats and things like that. So it's just, it's just not possible um, to use renewable energy to replace coal-fired power. There's not enough gas and we're not, we're not extracting it. What else is there? Nuclear is about the only other thing that could do it. Um, I have no objections to nuclear, but it tends to be pretty expensive to build because of a large amount of safety um, equipment and, and precautions built into the, into the reactor itself. And it takes quite a long time. But when it's built, as France has demonstrated, it, uh, it is competitive and uh, um, politics aside, it, it is an option as an alternative to coal. But, you know, we've got a thousand years supply of coal in Australia, massive amounts of it. And why aren't we using it? On the website last night, um, we had a few questions and James um, says that electricity retailers can charge what they like and they are the ones making the profit. Is this true in your view? No, there's no truth to that at all. <coughs> Electricity uh, retailers can't uh, charge what they like because if, if they put their prices up, you'll move to another one that's cheaper. That's, that's the way markets work. Um, so no, they can't charge what they like, unless they're government owned and they don't have any competitors. That's, that's the only time they could do that. If they're privately owned and they have competitors, it's not possible, they'll just go out of business if they do that. And that's not the contributing factor the, the, uh, to electricity prices, not the retailers who are uh, driving up prices. It's the, it's the fact that uh, there is a shortage of electricity relative to supply. In any market, if there's a shortage of popcorn and uh, supply continues for popcorn, the prices will go up. It happens in every market. Now, on the website, Muzz wants to know why you haven't spoken about electricity prices before, uh, as this is an issue that affects just about every person in the country. Well, I've had a lot to say. You haven't been listening, Muzz. Um, uh, I was uh, very involved in the inquiry into the uh, wind turbine issue um, quite early on when I, when I went into the Senate. It was chaired by Senator John Madigan but uh, I was one of the most active members of the committee. I also was the one who led the crossbench delegation to see Tony Abbott, the Prime Minister, to negotiate uh, the creation of the Wind Farm Commissioner position. And we had plenty to say about this subsidy of, uh, uh, of uh, wind turbines and solar powers, uh, solar powered electricity from baseload generators. So uh, wind and wind and solar wouldn't exist if it wasn't for these subsidies that are paid for by consumers that, um, uh, uh, that uh, go towards these renewables. Um, I also was in the Senate when the uh, 
uh, renewable energy target was lowered, and I made uh, plenty of comments at that time, <coughs> including speeches in the Senate, about how this wasn't going to solve it, it was just kicking the can down the road. Wouldn't be long before electricity prices started to rise because there would be a shortage, because there was no certainty about, uh, a, not sufficient certainty for anyone to build a, um, a, a baseload power station because all the renewables, because the renewables were getting all the, all the oxygen. I said at the time um, this would result in uh, higher electricity prices. Um, I wasn't the only one saying it, there were plenty of others who were predicting the same thing. It has occurred exactly as predicted and it's only now that people are waking up to it. Now, uh, Ben on the website just now is, is saying, we talk a lot about generation and variable costs, uh, but a lot of the costs are, are fixed based on, on previous unwise policies. Um, do, you, do you have any comment on the, on the fixed costs as opposed to um, fuel costs or variable costs? Well, uh, you have to look at it uh, bit by bit. Uh, fixed costs, there's not much in the way of fixed costs for renewables. There's, there's an upfront cost, a sunk cost to build these things. They're very expensive to build. But once they're built, um, then they don't cost all that much to operate. Uh, Coal-fired power stations, uh, they're not, you know, drastically expensive to build. Uh, they're obviously in the billions of dollars, but but then you have a constant cost involved, a variable cost in, in terms of the coal to supply uh, feedstock to the, um, uh, to the um, uh, generator. Um, gas, uh, you know, not quite as expensive to build as coal, um, but they also have to pay for the gas. As we know, the gas is relatively expensive at the moment. So I'm not sure that fixed costs are the real issue there. Certainly fixed costs in relation to, well, construction costs are a major barrier with nuclear. Nuclear requires, uh, you know, layers of safety precautions on, built into them. That's expensive to construct. Um, so, um, uh, so the standing cost, you know, the ongoing standing cost is not a massive uh, barrier in any case, but the upfront costs to get, you know, get to the point where they're starting to generate electricity uh, they can be quite considerable in, depending on which method is used. Uh, now, this week, as you'd be well aware, uh, it's been reported that South Australia has the highest household electricity prices in the world. South Australia also has very high penetration of wind energy into their grid at, at around 42%. In your view, is there a correlation between the two? Yeah. yeah. South Australia is a great model of what not to do. They went down the renewable path, didn't think they needed baseload power, allowed uh, uh, baseload power stations to close down and uh, relied on the interconnector from uh, the other states to keep them supplied when their, when their remaining baseload base, <coughs> base generators uh, weren't uh, keeping up with demand. And uh, as we saw when they had their blackout uh, uh, last summer, um, that's not sufficient, it isn't sufficient. And um, so as a result, within South Australia, electricity prices have gone up through the roof. The supply has not kept up with demand. Um, when, uh, uh, when wind and solar are kicking in, when the sun's shining and the, um, and the wind is blowing, prices come down. But when they stop, uh, prices go up. Now, businesses that pay electricity in particular, um, you know, they find that very disconcerting because they don't know what prices they're going to pay. The price in South Australia is not always the highest in the world. It depends on, on uh, how things are going. If the wind is blowing and the sun's shining and, and uh, people are on holidays, for example, uh, so a lot of jobs, are, a lot of businesses aren't operating, the price falls considerably. But uh, at other times it is massive and on average, uh, as you said, it's the highest in the world. Now, you cannot rely on renewable energy um, if it's not, if it's not um, um, baseload. The only re renewable energy that's baseload is hydro and nuclear. There is nothing else. Until we get to the point where batteries are affordable, if ever, and that's a very big if, um, uh, so that they can back up uh, wind and solar, um, then uh, we're going to need baseload power from other sources. 
Richard McFarlane wants to know how much in subsidies have been paid for each and every wind turbine and who, who is this money going to? Who, where are these subsidies going? Subs there's two types of subsidies. One is from the government, uh, the other one is from consumers. So there is no subsidy to the wind turbine sector from the government, uh, but there is from consumers. So what happens is uh, uh, the uh, generators of uh, coal, uh, using coal and gas, uh, have to produce these certificates, um, uh, which are um, acquired by the renewable generators. Um, those certificates um, subsidise effectively the, um, the renewable uh, generators. Those, the cost of those certificates are added to the electricity bills that uh, the uh, baseload power stations uh, charge consumers or charge their wholesalers. So it's a subsidy from consumers. Now if you, if you live in the ACT, for example, where um, they argue not necessarily accurately, but they try to argue that all of their energy is renewable, then it's even if it, there are times when that's true, so they're coming from snowy hydro and they're coming from wind and solar, um, the only reason that uh, they're not paying massive electricity prices is because people in New South Wales or Victoria or, and other, other states perhaps are paying higher prices for their electricity and in part, built into that cost is a subsidy that goes to these renewable energy uh, generators. So um, it is a subsidy uh, from consumers um, to, uh, uh, to the renewable energy sector so that they can be competitive. Without those subsidies, they wouldn't be competitive. They wouldn't, no one would build a power station generated by wind or solar without those subsidies coming from consumers. Now, Joshua Farry on the website is asking, who is responsible for the removal of generation in South Australia? Was that government or individual retailers? Well, it was primarily uh, government. They, they had the opportunity to keep it going. They were offered an opportunity to uh, keep um, one or two of the power stations there going. But the truth is those power stations were getting old and, uh, and the owners of them were saying, well, look, it's costing us more to keep them going than it is to close them down. So they went to the government and said, do you want us to keep going? If you do, you're going to have to find a way to make it worth our while to reinvest in these power stations. The, government's, the government in South Australia said, no, we don't need you. Take your uh, power station away. We'll just live on uh, renewable energy. Well, of course, that turned out to be a very, very poor decision. Now, had there been a better investment environment, had they had more certainty, I think the owners, well, there's no question, the owners of the baseload power stations, the coal and gas stations in, that closed down in South Australia, wouldn't have even asked the government um, for any reassurance or any assistance or anything like that. They just would have said, well, there's a market there for electricity. We, uh, we need to upgrade our, um, our power stations, same as the owners of Hazelwood in Victoria would have done had they had a better environment. But for the last 10, 15 years, all the government's ever talked about is renewable energy. They didn't want any baseload power, so of course nobody built any. Okay, thank you. I, I suspect that we've only just scratched the surface on this subject and it, it will be very topical for some time, so we'll probably revisit it at some stage, but that's all we have time for today. Thank you, Senator David Lionhelm.